Thanks, Mr. Chairman's introduction. It's my great honor to be here to present our recent work in SEEG. Today's topic is talking about the polymicrogyria and the schizocephaly. And this is work is coming from Taipei Retro General Hospital. Polymicrogyria is uh, a thermal and a small, partly fused torticogyria. And it contains abnormal torical lamination. It's a title of torical male formation is about 20% male formation in general population. And in MRI, we can see the irregular total surface apparent, uh, total thickening, and the steeple um, gryhoid meter junctions. On the other hand, you can see the schizophrenia is kind of abnormal in large fissure in the total surface, and sometimes deep into the white meter Sometimes it's open limb, sometimes closed limb, and usually it's a large uh, abnormal brain lesions. And we can uh, simply reset this type of lesion or mental treatment, but usually we can have a higher seizure freedom rate after surgery. And actually because the lesion size is large, and if we do the resective surgery, we will face a condition is that the intracranial volar loss. It will lead the uh, hydrocephalus and the cranial stenosis. So recently, we will perform the distillation surgery and have a shorter surgical duration and less complications. And uh, uh, a big problem is that uh, sometimes the, this polymetrogyria and the steosephaly is not 100% uh, fully conquered with the ectogenic cell. And, and uh, uh, furthermore, we have a 10% patient discordant with the uh, ectogenic cell. It means the legion and the seizure focus is different in different locations. And on the other hand, if the functional area cortex is overlaid with the polygyria or schizocephaly, we will face more difficult condition that we are difficult to reset it over managing this kind of residual focus. So sometimes it's very difficult and uh, of course we, we, we have another condition is that the abdogenism or uh, uh, the, the polymicrogyria is located in the frontal lobe but actually the seizure onset zone is coming from the hippocampus. So this kind of remote cortical area is sometimes happened. So in post five years, we have uh, five polymicrogyria cases and the four schizocephaly cases. So today I will present two, uh, each of one uh, and uh, try to figure out what kind of SEG we can on the road of see in these kind of cases. So the first case is an uh, 80 years old female patient left-handed and uh, denied post uh, including his uh, febrile conversions and inspection and hand injury. Of course, I have some language and the motor delayed. And then the patient has a selective mutison and the advance is one year so frequency is uh, every day and the trigger and the ED we show here. And we can see his seizure answer. Uh, you can see his uh, during sleep, he has a right wrist flexion and the reduction of right shoulder. And then he has a left side hand turning, but the best person is just, just turning. And uh, he has no positive confusions. And, it's like really like frontal lobe epilepsy, and we can locate it on the left side. So when we see her MRI, you can see the left frontal. We have two polymicrogyria. One is medium size superior frontal gyrus, and one is more laterally is a, a middle frontal gyrus. And this kind, of, you can see some somehow no dura heliotopia here. So it's uh, just like a very typical case of polymicrogyria, and then you can see a pet is uh, a little bit hypometabolism and the two say to to poly. So we need to identify some um, which one is uh, is more significant 
uh, Sichuan Sanson. So in the stealth edge, you can see the most polyspectral is coming from the left frontal area. And uh, you can see where the inter onset is much earlier coming from the left frontal area. So we hypothesis that this is uh, photomotor seizures with left frontal origin. And we try to identify which part of polymicrogyria is more significant and then charge for the seizure onset. So this, he, her SEH, you can find, we label the B as a blue and uh, the G electro as a red. And then you can see interest on spike, inter spike, inter spike, as well here. So actually, when uh, during inter ito it's have uh, actually is very large uh, irritative zone. And when the inter onset, you can see the B electro is more early, and the O D electro is quite quite of early, and the G have some attenuation. And if we see the ripple, you can see a lot of the. Uh, Lots of electrodes have a, a ripple frequency. So we can see this kind of low frequency phase activity sometimes in charge as, as uh, epilepsy. So when it on say you can see almost a frontal electro uh, very significant to be uh, in charge of the we can we can say that it's a primary organization, it's very early onset, and you can see the ripple. Okay, then another ito onset. So we we can include that we can conclude that the ito ito have some displacing activity on the B and the G, and the ito onset is coming most from the B one two and the G five and the A, and we have some uh, estimation find the motor cortex is around L and M. So let's see where is there uh, the electro is the B G B just is located in the. Uh, Maceo, more frontal, uh, superior frontal gyrus is uh, a polymicrogyria poly here. And another one, G, is here, is more laterally. So it means these two electro, these two polymicrogyria are in charge for the epilepsy activities. So we're trying to do this connection for these patients. This is our method. One is uh, coming from the Cobus Talosan, two is we said the superior frontal gyrus, and what another one is uh, from the insular cortex to the uh, lateral ventricle, and then finally we cut anterior to the posterior. So it's uh, we can isolate the superior part, uh, the anterior frontal uh, gyrus, uh, just like a little bit like a lobotomy. So it's a superior lateral anterior uh, direction, and trying to isolate. This part they are very so. so this patient have a do control until now. So another case is uh, schizocephaly four case with uh, epilepsy, and we're trying to uh, demo these cases. He's 25 years old, right handed. First attempt on the seven years old, denied trauma and infection, photon MSD. When the aura, uh, she had the left limb parasitia. When the it onset have an upper limb racing, tonic, head nodding, and then confuse for the three to five minutes. And the trigger here, AED here, so it's a drug resistant. And let, let's see his seizure onset. He is a bilateral schizophrenia, we can see a mile later. So the semiology actually is quite similar. Right hand, right upper limb dystonia, and the right. And you can see left dystonia too, and have some hypermotor or repetitive motor uh, symptoms, and a little bit right turning to right, and it will be confused after uh, discharge and need several minutes to come back. So the MI showing the open lip schizophrenia on the right frontal and uh, close limb, close limb. Uh, schizophrenia on the left frontal. And if you see closely, actually the schizophrenia is uh, just uh, tend from the severe fissure and the cause some tissue loss uh, in, uh, within the schizophrenia. And then you can see some 
uh, great white matter synchrony uh, in this area. And when you see the pet, they are a little bit hypermetabolism, just located in the posterior limb uh, of the cephaly, uh, also here. And when we see the EG, you can see it's the left side, right side, left side, right side. The spectrum mostly in the left temporal area, FP1, F7, F7, T3. And when the ETO onset actually is coming from the left, it's, you can see here have a semi-rhythmic theta activity, but right side is related smooth. So the semiology tells us it's coming from the right side because you can get lateralized to the right side frontal or temporal. But EEG somehow is confused because the inter coming from the right side, but uh, coming from the right side, but the it also coming from the left side. And the neural image, of course, is bilaterally, polymicrogyria and the schizocephaly. And we can see hyper and hypo area of the schizocephaly. And the neural cycle is bilateral, but the right side is more severe than left side. So when trying to put the SEG, both right side and the left side, on the right side, because we believe the right side is more significant because of the semiology. So we put more electrodes on the right side. And we fortunately, we find the very focal limited Sijuan uh, Sensor is coming from the G prime. Six and seven is located on the right side. You can see the G six, seven is just on the posterior limb of the schizophrenia and very near to the motor cortex. We believe motor cortex is here. So if we see the 3D reconstruction, we can see the G is a situation on on G67 is around here. And the F, actually we have a map here is hand area and I is also hand area. So actually this kind of motor uh, functional uh, cortex is overlap with this this is on sensor. So it's uh, for our surgery, we need uh, intraoperative monitoring and perform the evil potential to measure the patient safety. So you can see the F427, we, ha we have a uh, map left hand dystonia. So uh, we're trying to uh, define this area is our target and we localize here and trying to remove just this part because you see the SEG is very limited the spike is very limited, so we're trying to reset here. So when after uh, surgery, you can see we have uh, reset only here, uh, and make sure this patient's uh, motor function is okay. So this is a summary. You can see the very limited and very beautiful evolution of residual onset. And the G6, G7 is located here. And from the pattern, we can see the hypermetabolism. And then we just uh, enter into this at epitop left or gentle foresight, directly from the schizocephaly, and the reason it. On the 3D, you can hear, you can see very focal, focal epitop gentle foresight here. So until now, it's two years uh, of sense of habitual procedure and input mood and the learning. We stopped the anti-seizure drug and the body, body weight increased. And the EEG showing no epitalephone discharge at the 27 months. And if we, if, if we see these four cases with CT so safely, not all these patients are as large as her. Because just like you said, this is also very large so safely but you can see his uh central onset zone is very diffuse and not not only limited only one or two electrodes you can see the red one is central onset zone or primary organization but this case two also have a three electro and uh, across several gyrus and the this is is just around the uh so safely so this kind of uh uh, situ onset zone or, or epidemiological region is difficult to manage because sometimes it's overlap with the motor cortex. So sometimes for test two and test three, we just perform radio frequency ablation and trying to control his seizure. 
So uh, in summary, combining SEG and the social localization of the study of polymetrogenia and the geocephaly, I think it's very important. And uh, both in, uh, epigenic and the is large polynormal cortex consistent within the same widespread malformation. In such cases, when a very large structural region, it could be provided, and SEG can provide accurate and regional data, and can overcome the classical limitation of the intracranial EEG related to partially sampling and the total activity. And the most important thing is we can minimize our uh, legionectomy. We can just reset part of land. We, not, we don't need to remove all the legion and trying to make a uh, regular patient sigil free. So I think the ACG can recall the, uh, the epigenes of the limited deep uh, generation. And uh, sometimes you can just uh, identify remote, remote, the different region, uh, the different uh, uh, epigenic uh, gen, uh, epilep generators. So uh, I think this kind of patient, we should try to early treatment and identify uh, and the genome is partially overlap or just uh, or include only remote total area. So this is our talk today and I welcome any questions. Thank you for your attention.